Captain Paul Watson fond of the Sea Shepherd Society to stay active in a movement he saw stagnating. Sea Shepherd has kept an amazingly steady course over the years, one of direct action to save all marine animals. A former maritime sailor and Canadian Coast Guard officer, Paul led five campaigns against Canada's brutal harp seal hunt between 1977 and 1983. <laughs> He succeeded in reaching over a thousand seals, applying a dye to their coats, making them commercially valueless, and in fact, save those 1,000 seals in that manner. In an attempt to stop one of the ships, I had handcuffed myself to a winch line so that the ship wouldn't proceed and would sl be slowed down and wouldn't be able to get its quota. What happened there was that the uh, sealers decided that they were going to deal with me, and uh, they gave the order to pull the winch line in. I was dragged across the ice through the water, up the side of the ship and dropped three times back into the water. I spent about 10 minutes in the water altogether and I was losing all sensation in my hands and feet. It was frozen salt water. It was sort of a slush that I was in and this was about uh, 180 miles out at sea. Then I was dragged out, brought on board the ship and dragged through a gauntlet of sealers who were kicking me, spitting at me and rubbing my face into the blood on the deck. Two men stand between an icebreaker and the seals. They have often risked their lives to stop the killing. In defense of the seal, Captain Paul Watson became a human symbol for compassion and bravery. For over 25 years, our guest of honor has been getting up in the morning going out and risking life and limb to save the world. The ocean world of the whales, the dolphins, the seals, and the entire imperiled universe of wonder that lies just below the surface. Paul Watson is a reminder to the conscience of humanity that we all pay a price for the war that's been declared on marine wildlife, for pillaging the oceans as though there were no limit to nature's bounty or her forgiveness. Where he goes, he does things no one else dares. In doing so, he makes news, because he knows that creating awareness is the first step in creating change. Perhaps no one else alive better understands the power of the media to change minds. In using that power, he has saved the lives of countless numbers of our fellow creatures. For his defense of the defenseless, and for reminding us all of what one person can do, we are proud to honor the founder of the Sea Shepherd Conservation Society, Captain Paul Watson. Last night I returned from the largest wild, annual wildlife slaughter anywhere in the world, the Canadian seal hunt. Last week with me was John Paul DeJoria and his daughter Alexis, along with <laughs> Sea Shepherd Executive uh, International Director Lisa DiStefano. 
The seal hunt started on the 15th of March, and we were there in the ice with our ship. But there has not been any seals killed to this date. But that was despite that was despite the fact that the government put on my tail two 300-foot icebreakers and 100 RCMP officers to protect, as the captain of the Coast Guard vessel said, the sealers from the likes of you and your crew. You can go to jail for two years if you witness, film, or photograph a seal being killed. When we left the seal hunt last week, no seals were going to be killed because all of the seals in the Gulf of St. Lawrence were in the protected zone. So we left confident in knowing that these seals would not be killed. Today, the Canadian government lifted the protection zone to authorize the slaughter. So in accepting this tonight, I'm renouncing my Canadian citizenship. Canada has spent millions of dollars researching new markets. There is no market for seal pelts. There's over one million pelts in a warehouse in Norway. They can't be sold. One product that they've come up with is the seal penis, which they market to Asia as some sort of snake oil remedy for impotence. The Sea Shepherd Conservation Society has come up with an idea to provide an alternative with a more attractive industry, one that doesn't hurt the seals, that doesn't kill the seals, and that is the utilization of their naturally molted hairs. But unfortunately, Canada wants to kill the seals. And the reason they have for this is they say that the seals are a threat to uh, the survival of the codfish, when we all know that the codfish was destroyed by the incompetence of the Canadian government and the greed of the drag trawling operations. Canada now admits that. In fact, if you want to increase the population of cod, you can do so by increasing the population of these seals. These seals don't eat cod but they eat fish which prey upon young cod. When Jacques Cartier first came to this country in the early 1500s, there were 30 million of these harp seals. And today with the codfish at less than one half percent of its original numbers, it isn't the seals that are the fault for that, with under two million of them left. They're threatened by ice conditions, by overhunting, by pollution, by the destruction of the fish upon which they live. This has been about uh, the worst year in 300 years of records on this, uh, in this area, and the, uh, the ice has been reduced by, oh, 80, 85 percent at least. There's just uh, some pans that are close in and around Prince Edward Island. The entire Gulf of St. Lawrence should be covered with ice, and uh, this has presented a great obstacle for the seals. A lot of the pups uh, were probably born in the water and drowned, and yesterday we observed a lot of the pups falling off of the very small pans, and we had to uh, rescue uh, one of them right beside the, the ship. And so this is uh, going to have a significant impact on seal populations. And I think it's really irresponsible for the government of Canada to be issuing seal hunting licenses without any of their scientists making a determination on the health of the seals. The government hasn't expressed any concern for the seals at all. Their only concern is that we might be interfering with the, uh, the people who plan to kill them. And so they've got a Coast Guard vessel not far from us and numerous flyovers by Department of Fisheries, Oceans and Helicopters. I understand that the RCMP have a, a SWAT unit ready to pounce on us if we make any move towards uh, the sealers. So that's where their concern lies. You know, I just would like to know who's protecting Mother Nature from people like you and your government. Over. Well, uh, to cut the conversation short, to I believe it's you who is trying to do that. No, no, no. you don't understand. You need to get out of here with yep. your film. Mm -hmm. they're, they're coming back. They're coming back from the airport. They're going to confiscate They're going to get everything. everything. Okay. Between being a protester and a reporter, I've been scared a lot of times, but I was terrified this time. Paul Watson was going out there, along with actor Martin Sheen, not to confront the sealers, but to offer them an alternative way of making a living without having to kill the seals. Well, they almost killed Paul, and they terrorized the rest of us, and in the end, we had to flee for our lives. Well, Mr. Watson is not welcome in Magdalen Island, so uh, they're going to uh, the Auberge uh, Madly, where he's staying, and tell the owner he's, uh, he's not desirable here. Then they smashed down the door, I got in, they smashed the other door down, and then I was facing about 50 of them in a very small room, and uh, 
they hesitated and then one of them came over and punched me in the side of the head at which point I was able to knock three of them down with a stun gun that I had but the others then just piled in it was like an avalanche of, of people and then the QPP managed to get through grab me and haul me through the uh, crowd to the police car uh, at which point when I got in the police car the window exploded because a, a brick came through the window and we got to the airport they got a charter plane and and forced me to leave. What I was really worried about was that uh, my crew and everybody were forced to stay behind. That was the first, the first time in my whole life I had so much fear about my, whole, my own life. And secondly, I have to say I'm absolutely astonished what the media are, are doing here. They do, not, they do not report about this whole thing. The, the only thing they do is uh, writing little articles in which they say there was no violence. Was there violence? And there was absolutely violence. There was, there was more than violence. That was violence concrete there was violence directly against us personally against paul watson against lisa against us as journalists and they they threatened us uh, to 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 kill us if we if we wouldn't give them uh, the tapes it's illegal under the seal protection act to witness or photograph or film the killing of one of these seals it's a gag law it's illegal to approach within a half a nautical mile of a seal hunt it's illegal to fly under 2,000 feet of a seal hunt. And yet, for one dollar, you can get a license to kill the seals and cut off its penis. And if we're going to stop that, we're going to have to stand up to the Canadian government and say, no, we're not going to take this anymore. It's always been my lifelong ambition to shut down this seal hunt, ever since I was a boy of nine. And we will be doing this for the next 20 years, if need be. Our efforts will protect these species and make sure that they're around on this planet a thousand years from now, ten thousand years from now, a million years from now. Our efforts today can make that difference.